We want to turn now from the attacks on the ground to the attacks on our devices. The White House is now warning that Russia could be planning cyber attacks on Americans. And here's what the Deputy National Security Advisor Ann Neuberger said about it yesterday. We've previously warned about the potential for Russia to conduct cyber attacks against the United States, including as a, re as a response to the unprecedented economic costs that the U.S. and allies and partners impose in response to Russia's further invasion of Ukraine. Today, we are reiterating those warnings, and we're doing so based on evolving threat intelligence that the Russian government is exploring options for potential cyber attacks on critical infrastructure in the United States. The announcement comes a week after the U.S. government met with more than 100 companies about this new cybersecurity threat. And during the meetings, they shared resources and tools to help big businesses increase their security. It's part of something the government called Shields Up. It's a program, but it is not beyond the scope that Putin would come after the rest of us. Small businesses, average Americans, he's done it before. So what do we do to protect ourselves from a cyber attack? And what on earth does he want with us little guys anyway? I wanna bring in Jason Weiss, He's a retired FBI supervisory special agent, currently a cybersecurity attorney at the law firm of Fagri, Drinker, Biddle, and Reith. Jason, I think that's a really important question. Most of us can't imagine what any Russian would want with my Instagram or my emails to my mom or my Costco orders. Why should I be concerned? Hi, Ashley. Thank you for having me again. I really appreciate it. I think what it comes down to is what Putin and what the Russians have been are trying to do now is what they've been trying to do for 20 years, and that's to keep us distracted. We're less of a threat to him on an international scale when we're divided or worried about our own internal problems. The Russians have been launching cyber warfare against the United States for decades, and there's no reason to think that it would stop now if not grow in intensity. And I think that's a legitimate concern because cyber warfare is not as much physical as, as it is psychological. And I think that's where Putin is trying to aim, cause us to be confused, divided, and fight among ourselves. So what you're saying is that, you know, these uh, fights against the police and what, I mean, Dan Abrams just had a great story about Harvard saying they won't eat with police officers and don't call the police and, you know, being upset, those kinds of things to divide us and get us distracted from what he's really doing? In a sense, yes. And you have to look at it this way. If people are worried about their own problems, if they're, because I mean, everybody's life is on their phone. Everybody's life is on their computer. And if they feel that that's subject to Russian attack, it's gonna cause them a higher level of stress. They're gonna be more focused on that. It takes the eye off the ball, if, if that makes sense. And I think that's ultimately what the Russians are trying to do as well as the North Koreans, the Chinese. America is an easily distracted country when it comes to stuff like this. And we tend to fight among ourselves over issues like this. And what, what I see, and from my experience from 22 years in the FBI, is that this is more of a psych, psychological weapon as much as it is a way to distract us and to cause us problems, right? Because if they're able to shut down critical infrastructure, if you can't get gasoline, if you can't get health care, if you can't get food, what's that going to do to America in terms of our ability to not just fight international conflicts when we can't feed our own citizens or we can't get gas to get to work. You can see how that can cause turmoil at, at a tremendously difficult level. So that that's the next question, and I think this is the bigger one, although I was worried about who's on my phone. Um, I, the critical infrastructure part, yes, that that is something I think a lot of us worry about every day. Uh, but how vulnerable are we? Like, how how good have we gotten at protecting ourselves and putting up the, what the government calls the shields up. You know, I, I'm going to, I'm retired now, so I'm going to be honest. I don't think we're well prepared at all. I mean, at, at the end of the day, most of our electrical grids are guarded by nothing but a chain link fence and a $10 padlock. They're, when, when these, when these uh, entities were built, they were not built with cybersecurity in mind. We're having to kind of go in after the fact and try and put in cybersecurity controls whether it be technical, administrative, or physical type controls. But originally when, when our power grid was built, when a lot of our critical infrastructure was built, there was no cybersecurity. You remember, I think February of last year, there was an attack on a Florida water treatment plant. And it was, it was super easy for, although the bad guy was never identified, 
they're able to break into the industrial control system and poison the water supply. It's unfortunately cybersecurity is not probably where it needs to be at a realistic level. I mean, it's gotten better, there's no doubt. And I know that working there, there's constant work on improvement, but if you're sitting there and saying, is, is our critical infrastructure safe? No, we just saw Colonial Pipeline happen just a few months ago where, where, where the ransomware attack shut down oil to a third of the United States. And if it wasn't for the company paying a ransom to get the pipeline back online, we don't know how long we would have been without oil, which fed our airports, our highways, our, our commuters. I mean, they could knock out an electrical we'll, grid just as sure. easily. We had gas bikes, I, I remember it uh, well. And so that's a good question uh, to follow. And that is, okay, so maybe Vladimir Putin, uh, his sanctions against Joe Biden and Jen Psaki don't matter. But if he decides that his digital army can well uh, paralyze a number of critical businesses, that's, that's the effect of sanctions, right? Like he could do it too his way. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I don't have any inside knowledge anymore of anything like that, but think about it. I mean, most hospitals, for example, have two types of networks. They have an information technology network where you're used to getting your email and your data, but they also have what's called an operational technology network, which runs infrastructure. If they're able to go in and attack the operational technology networks, which don't have the security you'd probably want, they're able to shut down elevators. They're, they're, they're able to shut down uh, surgical centers, hospitals. I mean, there, there was a case in Germany, I remember last year, where, where a patient died on the table because a hospital got hit by a ransomware attack during the middle of surgery, and they tried to move the patient to a different hospital, and they couldn't get it done. If, if there was a concerted cyber attack against our critical infrastructure, and we don't have the fences in places, it could literally shut down our food, our power, our water supplies, all of that. And, you know, that's, that's scary stuff, but it's real. And, you know, I, I hope we don't wait you know, I think we've talked in the past, action always beats reaction. We have to be more proactive in terms of our cyber hygiene from not just a government standpoint, but a personal standpoint, like putting multi-factor authentication, not using passwords like password and doing stuff like that. You don't want to make it so easy that it, that it, it just opens these attacks up to a far greater extent than they need to be. It's like with your house, you want to have fences, you want to lock your doors. You don't want to make it too easy for a thief. You want them to go to a different house and Cyber is no different. If you want to protect your phone, don't click on a link from an email you don't recognize. If you don't know who that person is, don't click on the link. Don't install software you're not sure that is, is appropriate for the phone or hasn't been altered. Like when people jailbreak their cell phones, what they're doing is they're getting rid of the security controls and allowing software onto the phones that may or may not be infected with malware. So people have to, I think, use a little bit of common sense for lack of a better term. And you know, in the FBI, I know the FBI preaches that constantly, cyber hygiene, cyber protection, because the new battlefield worldwide is going to be digital more than everything. I don't, I don't think you're going to see the United States and the Russians rolling tanks at each other, but I can assure you that the Russians are going to be attacking us digitally, and, I, and, you know, and I'm sure other countries are as well, and we need to prepare ourselves. And, you know, there's good people trying to help us do that, but it, it can't come quick enough. Yeah, cyber hygiene, one of the best terms I think that's uh, come out of the last few years for sure. Um, and you're right, still people use password and password one uh, for their passwords and it's bank and everything else. So you're right. Hey, uh, Jason Weiss, thank you for doing this tonight. Really appreciate it. Super interesting information and very useful. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.